In the name of the living and loving God, who is Creator, Christ and Holy Spirit. Amen. <clears throat> Yes, church, we are church, good church. We are church, meaning we have come together to help each other grow in the faith wherever we might find ourselves along that journey. So, when I was preparing to leave the Church of the Epiphany in downtown D.C., um, the leader of the Muslim group, uh, it's actually in Northern Virginia, but um, he also led a group that was uh, not an imam, but a, a lay leader of people who worked downtown, Muslims who worked downtown in D.C., who came to the Church of the Epiphany for Friday prayers. And he said the custom, the Islamic custom, is this. When, a, when somebody leaves a faith community, um, they make a statement of apology for any wrongs done and of hope of staying in connection with those with whom they had made relationships. And I thought, I thought that was a really good statement. It's sort of clean. Let's get rid of that which was not, not good. And let's focus on what continues. So, as a Christian who believes in God's love, I want to say that um, if I have offended any of you, I sincerely apologize. And if you have felt loved by me, it was genuine. Church is good. I believe that if more people in their own religion turn to their community of faith for growth, support, and challenge, this world would be very different. I know that this world is facing more and more challenges as the years tick by. But I also know God created all humans as good people and gave us the opportunity in our way along our own path to be good, to be responsible, to be faithful. I believe that becoming a community of God's love needs to be the goal and purpose of all people on this planet, whatever their religion. For us Christians, <clears throat> the human and the holy came, became one through Jesus Christ. We know that story. Luke tells it as a narrative with the birth of Jesus. John tells it in the statement, the flesh dwelled among us. The word dwelled among us and became flesh. And it's the same statement, is that in Jesus Christ, there is that connectedness, there is that blend, that is the overlay of human and holy. And if God did that through God's Son and through creation, shouldn't that be our goal as well? As Jesus said later on in John's Gospel, um, I command you to love one another as I have loved you. He didn't say, I command you to love each other like you've always been doing. He said, I command you to love one another as I have loved you. That means with God's love. That's something we should hear every single day and be reminded of it when we come together in some sort of faith gathering. And to realize Jesus did not make that command saying, I know you can't do it, but I'm going to say it anyway. That's, that's not why he said it. He said it because he believed that it was clearly possible for every human to in some way hold the holy and the human in our lives. It takes focus. It takes trial. It takes learning. But it can be done. Of course, we can talk about God's love all we want. We can say that we know it, and we can say that 
we want to learn more about it. We can say this or that, and we know that there are different kinds of love that might be compared to God's love, however we describe that. I mean, there's love among family. There's love among friends. There's a love among parishioners. There's puppy love. Did y'all know we had puppies? Oh, I'm sorry. <clears throat> I'm sorry, but I got to tell an animal story when I preach. And so, yes, we had a litter of nine puppies. And their release date was Christmas Day. Thank goodness nobody came and picked up their puppy on Christmas Day. But they're almost all gone. But in the puppy room in our house, my wife Joanne cleared out a, a space about like this, about four by two, which was a special place to go and sit with the puppies. It's socialization, you know to get to know them. She called it um, the bonding space. I called it the love zone. Because <laughs> you couldn't help but feel loved by those puppies. It's not God's love, I realize that, but it is love coming from God's creation. And it makes us think about things, how enthusiastically God might love us through puppies. And what we really are talking about today is how can we sense God's love? Not so much by puppies, that can happen, but really as someone sitting in prayer or standing in prayer, someone being by him or herself, how can we say that's God's love? Here's something that I'd like to suggest. I believe that everybody on the planet has experienced one time or another God's presence and God's love. We might have trouble analyzing it or saying something about it, but I believe that has happened at least one time to every person on this planet. So the first step is to feel it, because it, it's something we can't make happen. We can be prepared for it to happen but it happens and we feel it. That's the first step. The second step is to accept it, which means sort of recog that's not my thought, that's not my feeling, that's, I think that's God, yes, that is God's love. God is loving me at this moment. moment. Accept it, to feel it, to accept it, then to trust it, Wait a minute, I'm not nearly good enough for God to love. All of the sins I've committed, all of the mistakes I've made, all of the things I've ruined, I know, I, no, I, God can't love me. Don't go that way. Trust what you felt, what you accepted. Trust that it is God's love. And you didn't ask for it, it just happened. Feel, accept, trust. And then share. Share with somebody else who might be looking for God's love. Share with somebody else the feeling that you had and the encouragement to be open to the same thing. That's what we're talking about when we say we are called to experience God's love in God's church. We're called to learn more about God's love. We're called to learn more about loving as God loved us. We're called to learn more about loving through God's love. It's sort of like we are a conduit. We prepare ourselves and here comes God's love and we recognize it and then it goes on out and it's shared with somebody else and, and things are good and peace is made, and sins are forgiven, and relationships are healed. In just a few moments, Sophia is going to be baptized. That means we'll hear the baptismal covenant again, the baptismal covenant in our prayer book, which is the core of our faith. And you know, as we go through that line of bringing justice, of recognizing others as Christ, Christ, uh, as Christ people, um, as reaching out to the poor, as go through all of those statements. Um, you know what the response is, I will with God's help. 
which in a way you see is talking exactly about what I'm saying, is in some way inviting God to help us in our body as we do something with other humans, combining the human and the holy. But there's another response that is also appropriate. And, and if you want to think it, I think that would be just fine. When, when we go through that list, will you, will you, will you, and the answer is, I will with God's help, you might also think, I will with God's love. I will with God's love. I'd like for you to repeat something after me. Jesus, Jesus. Teach, me to love with God's love. teach me to love with God's love. And I'd like for you to be silent for one minute and hold that <clears throat> statement in your head and in your heart and let it speak to you. Jesus, teach me to love with God's love. Amen.